Hello everybody, Joel here from Golf Monthly. Hope you're well and welcome to this video where I'm talking you through the clubs in my bag for 2019. It's not really a vlog as such, it's more a look at what I play this year. Obviously, look, I've got the choice of pretty much anything I want to put in the bag for 2019. I've tested all of the latest stuff. So this is the, the clubs that I have chosen. I've made some pretty big changes to my bag from what I was using last year. So without further ado, let's take you through what I've got. First off, we've got the Ping G410 Plus driver. Now, this change was kind of enforced for me because we went to Orlando for the PGA show uh, and I took my Callaway Rogue head out there and actually got lost. Somewhere out in Orlando, my Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero driver head has found its way in someone's bag or it's fallen down a drain or something. So I had to change out of it. Would I have changed out of it anyway? Possibly because this G410 Plus did give me exceptional ball speed. I'm not really sure how Ping have done it. Maybe it's the turbulators, maybe it's the back weight. Whatever it is, this was the fastest driver in terms of ball speed I've ever tested. Interesting about this, uh, I play it in nine degrees and I've got the weight obviously in the neutral position, does come in draw and fade. Interesting thing about this is that it, obviously the shaft is slightly shorter than most driver shafts out there. I think most are around 45 and a half. This is 45 and a quarter, I believe. So slightly shorter than most, but it's still giving me the most ball speed. It's the Ping Tour 65 stiff shaft. It's a very, very stable club head. I just feel like with the shorter shaft, I get a bit more control over strike. And when I don't quite strike it, it doesn't really deviate offline too much. The feel has definitely improved from G400 Max. It just feels a lot hotter. Um, a lot more powerful and uh, definitely prefer the look of it apart from the turbulators which I really don't like but I'm kind of coming around to it and getting over it. So even though they are a lot thicker and they don't really suit my eye anymore, the sole does seem to mark up quite easily with T marks. Not sure why that is but it's a small price to pay. Ping G4 10 Plus, very impressed with this so far. Next up, Fairwood, another new addition for me. This is the TaylorMade M6. This was an absolute no-brainer. I did a Fairwood test recently, and this one was by far the easiest to hit. And what I mean by that is, for some reason, I seem to strike this out of the middle basically every time compared to other Fairwoods, especially off the deck. You're not really expecting to strike Fairwoods solid every time off the deck, but this just seemed really easy to hit. I find it very easy to align. I really like the design of the crown that TaylorMade have implemented with this club. You know, that elongated silver section with the parallel lines just sets up really nice. I feel like I can line the face up really easily. Feels pretty lightweight, actually. Very easy to swing, but really, really hot out of the middle. I've just got it in the stiff shaft. This is the uh, Fujikura Atmos uh, 6 in stiff. So I've not been fitted for this. Apologies, obviously would recommend you do get fitted for your clubs if you can. Um, but I tested this over a number of weeks uh, on the course and the launch monitor and it just seemed to give me the best of everything. So yeah, TaylorMade M6, very happy with that. Uh, it's in 15 degrees. Um, next up, hybrid. Now I've changed, stopped and changed my hybrid loads of times. I had a Titleist one in there. Um, I had a Gapper, you remember TaylorMade Gapper mid. Then I switched to the Gapper low and I've now opted for a hybrid again kind of reverted back to a traditional shape hybrid. This is the new Callaway Apex. Kind of a few reasons why I've gone for this one. I like the shape of it. It's a nice compact shape. Hybrids in the past have been a little bit toe heavy, um, but this one is quite symmetrical in shape. Easy to align because it's got those full face uh, grooves here that go across the face. Um, so I found it quite easy to set up behind the ball. There's no offset on it, which I like. The leading edge sits flush to the hosel. And um, the way it's spec is actually quite suited to my game. So it's slightly higher in loft, it's 20 degrees, but it's an extra stiff shaft, so it's 6.5. This is the Project X Catalyst shaft. So the combination of the higher loft, but the stiffer shaft kind of brings the flight into where I want it to be. And because it's stiffer than stiff, I don't miss it left as much. So that's kind of why I've gone for this in um, the hybrid rather than the fairwood because hybrids do tend to go left on me so that stiffer shaft stops it from going left quite as much so i haven't been using it a great deal but from what i've tested so far out in the course and the launch monitor i've been pretty impressed with this 
Uh, it's actually quite forgiving as well. So yeah, Callaway Apex in 20 degrees. Uh, moving into my irons. These are the TaylorMade P760. Big fan of these, got fitted last year. Um, the Project X 6.0 shaft stopped the ball going left for me. Uh, I just like the combination of feel and there's, the irons do give pretty good distance as well, but I have had these weakened by one degree to match my eye blades. So they're the same loft, seven irons, 34 degrees. So they're going a similar distance to my eye blades. Kind of just fancied a change really. There was nothing wrong with my ping eye blades, but just thought I'd try something new, uh, some modern technology. Obviously the long irons are hollow, so a bit more speed on those long iron shots that are more difficult to hit. There's basically no offset on these long irons at all. You know, I really like the look of these long irons and actually is a common complaint of a lot of sets for me is the long irons do have too much offset, but I can't say that's the case with these P760s. I like the kind of compact blade length from heel to toe. Relatively thin top line, not the thinnest, but just kind of ticks all the boxes for me for what I'm looking for from my irons. And I've got the lovely Golf Pride MCC Plus 4 grips on there with a couple of extra layers. Um, so that's four to pitching wedge. And then I've not changed my wedges, so I've got the same wedges uh, I had before. So this is Vokey SM7. I've got the 50 degrees in the full sole grind, stamped with number 67, my best ever round. And then I've got the 54 degrees, 10 degrees of bounce in the S grind. And then finally I have the 58 degree with the D grind. Really a big fan of the D grind, like I mentioned before. Uh, gives me good forgiveness out of bunkers, but still has a little bit of versatility as well on tight lies. Kind of offers me a little bit of everything. And then another, the last big change uh, with my bag is the putter. Um, chopped and changed over the last few months. Uh, had a Obviously, yes, putter for a long time, switched into an even roll for a bit, um, but now I've kind of settled on this TaylorMade TP collection black copper, the Soto model. A few things I like about this. The design of the flange, I like the, the white sight line on that address, helps me align the club face. I like the performance of the insert. For me, it gives me very good roll, doesn't kind of pop the ball off too quickly. It's very controlled. Um, but very consistent. I like the hosel design, the way it flows into the head. There's no plumber's neck or kind of offset there. It's a very, you know, just a, whole, a shaft width amount of flow into the head. Um, and I like the grip, actually. This is the Superstroke uh, Pistol GTR 1.0. Um, don't normally like Superstroke grips with the stitching down the back, but I kind of got used to that. A little bit more thickness in the top hand, and this is a little bit longer than what I usually play. So this is 35 inches. Used to play 34, but felt like the 35 inches actually just felt a bit more comfortable for me when I tested them both side by side. Uh, me being relatively tall at six foot three, um, that extra inch did give me a better feel. Couple of other things to talk you through in my bag. Um, I used the Bushnell Tor V4 Shift Laser. Obviously I'm trying the Pro XE model at the moment, but um, this one's just very reliable. I love the clarity through the viewfinder. Obviously you've got the slope adjusted distances if you want to use those, which you can't use in competitions. I don't tend to use them at all. Just really light, easy to use, reliable. Battery seems to last forever. Um, so I recommend you give that a try. Other things in my bag, obviously golf ball, very important. I use the Titleist Pro View One X, the new one, Pro View One X. Um, like I mentioned in my review video, the new model gave me extra ball speed with the driver and iron that I wasn't really expecting. About mile, one mile an hour quicker. With both of those, three to four more yards extra carry without sacrificing short game feel or control. So for me, it's a win-win and it was a pretty easy switch and a higher flight with the driver it kind of suits my game. So yep, yeah, big fan of that. Ball marker, you know, I use a UAE Durham from Dubai. I used to live out there, uh, what, over 10 years ago now. Brought one back with me and used it ever since. That's my lucky ball marker. Uh, you notice the bag itself. This is a new bag for me this year. This is the TaylorMade Flex Tech. Couple of reasons why the look of it, the red and black matches the head covers of all my woods. You'll notice the, the Ping, the Taylor Red and Callaway all have red and black colorways on their clubs. Um, so that's why one of the reasons why I've chosen this bag. Um, the reason I wanted to use this over my tight list was that because it's got a few more pockets. Felt like with the tight list, while it was waterproof and this one isn't, and this one doesn't have the strap that secures the, the legs when you're using it on a trolley, which is quite annoying. It didn't have 
the requisite amount of pockets for me to split certain things up like my gloves and tees whereas this one does have those extra pockets on here so that's kind of one of the main reasons why I've used this although I did use it in the rain and I put my phone in the valuables pocket and it did get a bit wet uh, last week which was a bit annoying but I think if you're playing in relatively dry conditions this was a very good option it's got a five-way divider which is more than enough to keep all the clubs set separate while making them accessible as well so that concludes my what's in the bag for 2019 i hope you enjoyed it obviously gives you an insight into what someone who could play anything they want has chosen to play based on all the testing that i've done over the last few months so hopefully it's going to transform my game and give me some decent scores last year was a very forgettable year for me in terms of performances on the course hopefully this will transform my fortunes on the course. We'd love to hear from you. What are you using in 2019? What clubs have you changed into for this year? What are you really excited about trying? We'd love to hear from you, of course. But from a very sunny Burley Park Golf Club here in Stamford, it's goodbye.